Hi friends, it's Z Zelda NRJ3. Today is Monday afternoon, the state. It's a very cool, what's the temperature? 67 degrees. Uh, it's been pouring rain all day. It has stopped briefly. We still have lots of clouds. It looks like a person right there in the middle. We have lots of clouds all the way around. Lots of black clouds. And more clouds. I wanted to show you what I got at the Yarn Crawl LA. This is my first time in three years. Three years? It's been three years? I don't remember. It's been a long time because of the quarantine and everything. I was not planning on going. I knew about it. Uh, received a message from my friend Kat at the Little Knittery. Hello Kat. And she said, are you going to come through? And I was like, oh. why, as a matter of fact, yes, I am. So she said, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. I talked to my Thelmer. Hello, Thelmer. And I was telling her about it. She's like, yarn crawl? When's that? And I was like, this weekend? She was like, oh, man, I've never been to a yarn crawl. And I said, well, I was planning on going tomorrow, which is Saturday, to the yarn crawl, to the little knittery. Do you want to go? Hell yeah, I want to go. <laughs> She came down, you know, the best part of her coming and joining me. She drove the entire time. I sat back and I crocheted. And now, because of that, I have a faux. Mm, it needs tassels. But I'm going to consider it a faux. Oh, and it probably needs a little blocking, too. But it's raining today. It's not going to block out in the rain. I have three faux. Oh, my finger. I have three faux. Oh, that hurts, too. I have three faux. <laughs> the number three. And I am so excited. I worked on these diligently. Every little chance I get. And my hands are working. Because if you guys are new to my channel, thank you very much for joining and saying hello. Let me introduce myself. My name is Zelda, like the video game. But everybody around here calls me Z. I crochet. I love yarn. And a lot of you came over through my friend Rosie. So Rose loves to crochet. If you guys follow her, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to leave her link down below. Thank you, my Rosie. She sent a lot of you guys over because of the loveys that she makes. Which are these beautiful loveys that I created a little over four years ago. I um, suffer from rheumatoid arthritis. And a lot of times, my hands are so swollen I can't crochet, and crochet is my therapy, and yarn is life. And I really, really, really wanted to get into amigurumis. At the time, my bestie Yolanda, Yolanda Soto Lopez, all crafts channel, I'll leave her link down below. Hello, yo! She had created an amigurumi book, a couple of them, through Leisure Arts. You can find them at Joann's, at Michael's, any bookstore. I think Amazon as well. And she was telling me about them. Plus, she has a YouTube tutorial on it. So I tried it. I made two loveys. I think I made the owl and the bunny. And boy, were my fingers hurting. It's depressing. I have to put the yarn down. And I easily give up. Because when the paint hits you like that, you don't want to do anything. So long story short, long story long, I was sitting there one day and I was trying to make another lovey for my grandbaby, Tink, who now is going to be 15. <gasps> oh my God. My oldest grandbaby is going to be 16. That's this one, baby Michael. <sighs> I'm just excited today. So I was trying to make this lovey for Tink and I... I frogged it. I started again. I frogged it. And I was like, ding dong. Because, you know, you start with the head and you go on the round and the decreases and all that. And it just wasn't working. I put it down. I was also working on a granny square triangle. Uh, I mean, a, a granny square. I go back. I start working on the granny square. I tried again. You know, I took a little break. I had some lunch. I came back to it. And I was like, if there was only an easier way to make this lovey. Now, when Tink used to come over when she was little, she used to have all her little stuffies laid around. 
and I had a couple of them on the on the dining room table where I was crocheting. So I'm petting it, you know, it's also um, emotional support animal for me, stuffy. And I'm trying to think, what can I do? Nothing's clicking. I put it down, I watch some YouTube videos, and I'm watching Yolanda Soto Lopez's pattern on the uh, Abessi Bun Beanie. And I was like, oh, dang. Messy Bun Beanie. Ten years ago, Messy Bun Beanies were not a thing. Now they're all over. They're the latest craze, right? So I said, I'm going to try a Messy Bun Beanie. I did the pattern, as she said. Got crocheted around the little, um, what are these things? Hair tie <laughs> that I bought at the dollar store. And I finished it. I put it on. I pushed my bun through because you guys know I wear a bun 24-7. Even to go to bed, I wear a bun at night. So I'm trying to make another one because I, I mean, I did finish it. I finished the beanie, but it wasn't the colors that were talking to me because I like bright and exciting. And I just grabbed any yarn as a little sample to see if I could do it. So I got some bright color. I tried it again. I'm crocheting, you know, in the little ring, and I'm I'm just going to town, and I'm having fun, thinking that I got the pattern right, and I didn't. And next thing you know, it's forming like a little, like a dishcloth, and I was like, what? So I'm looking at the little stuffy, and I was like, oh, look, the yarn matches the stuffy. And I was like, it has the little hole, so for poops and giggles, <laughs> I put it around the little stuffy, and it hung like a lovey, and I was like, ding dong, what? So immediately, I cleared the table, I started again, I did the maths, what's divided by four, what's divisible by four, you know, because you got four corners, do the stitches, I got a regular granny square, I counted how much do I have to go, I... I did 20, you know, I did 30, you know, I, I kept doing it till I got the right amount. I made a granny square that matched the little stuffy. I put it together, and here's the picture again. These are my very first two little lovies that I created. I was so happy. I showed it on my video over four years ago. I was like, look, look, guys. This is for people that can't do the little amigurumis with the little tiny hooks. Like, this is great. And I started getting, oh my gosh, do you have a tutorial? Um, how, what are the, what's the pattern? How did you do it? And I was like, oh, it's easy. You know, this is what I did. And because I love sharing with my friends, I want people to know there's an easier way to make Amis rather than crocheting around in a circle and, you know, your fingers getting stuck. So I did the tutorial. I sent it off and it was a hit. Oh my gosh, I was so happy. Everybody was like, hey, thanks, Z. Only problem I had, and let me explain now. At the time, I, ha I had old man, because he was still a puppy. And I had uh, Muzi. She was younger. So, we were in the process of growing grass. And the only clear spot I had was facing the dirt. And I'm on a bench, so I have my phone attached to the end of the bench and I'm sitting with my legs like this and I got the crochet in front of me which was so hard but well worth it because the point got across on how to do the lovies everybody loved them I'm telling you it was a hit the problem I had was old man because he was a puppy he kept bumping the table and he's like, I'm going to get your attention. I'm going to get your attention. I was like, oh, man, get out. And I kept stopping like, please, kids. I call my, my dog's kids. I'm like, kids, please. And then Muzi was like, oh, I want to play. Boom, she hit me. The camera fell. Oh, my gosh. I was like, kids, you do this stuff again. You know, y'all going to get in trouble. I set it back up. I try again. And here comes old man like, bang, loud. Old man is a mastiff which is like the size of a small pony. Muzi's smaller. She's a pit bull mix. She's American Staffordshire. 
And the two of them together were just like, bam, bam, bam. And I was like, dang, kids! And then they look like, oh, shit, mama's mad. And then it stopped. Now, that little moment that I just got fed up is on the video, and you'll hear it. But I got a lot of static for it because people didn't know that they were not my children. Well, they were my children, but <laughs> I didn't give birth to them. They're my fur babies. So I have talked to Kim Slover. Hello, my Kimmy. That is my friend who I made the video of the loveys for. I had never seen anybody do a video tutorial like that before. But recently, there's been a lot of videos coming out of people redoing the video and making a different type of blanket, calling the pattern their own. They created it, We're not inspired by anybody. They never seen it before. You know, and it's like, I know you guys are telling fibs, and that's the biggest thing to me. Don't fib. I can see through your eyes. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of people, man. I'm telling you, a lot of people have been recreating the video, calling it their own, not inspired by anybody. You know, if you want to say that, that's up to you. I can't stop you. You're going to say what you want to say. I know I didn't copy anybody. I know that I created it out of my head because of my hands and my fingers from having rheumatoid. It was an easier way for me to do amigurumis, and I wanted to share with my friends because that's what I do. And now it's just taken off. It's my little baby has blossomed into many, many little babies, and there's people that are taking credit as their own, and you know, that's fine. If you feel in your heart that you're telling the truth, well, congratulations for creating a new pattern. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because it's been on my mind lately about all the people that keep posting these videos. You know, I find them two times a week. Oh. <laughs> Uh, you know, YouTube is worldwide. It's all over the world. And people that you think you're like, Africa, she created that pattern? Okay. Not inspired. And then you check her list, who she follows. She follows Rosie. She follows me. She follows everybody that does the loveys. And I'm like, oh, you telling lies, girl? Mm. So with that being said, let's talk about the LA Yarn Crawl. So first stop for the LA Yarn Crawl. These are the bags that you purchased from the LA Yarn Crawl. I did not purchase the bag. My Thelber Lou got it for me. Thank you very much. And these are all the shops that are participating. And let me show you. First, let me show you what I was wearing. Oh, I made this like five years ago, but I just sewed in the ends Friday night <laughs> because it was a tower of terror. <laughs> so to speak. This is the boomerang shawl. The pattern is by Proper Pineapple and it's made with all um, metal and tosh and it's held double. You start at the tip. Just the tip. You start at the tip and then oh, I um, brought in the new color, introduced a new color which is teal, introduced a new color which is this fun party color and then the purples and then the charcoal you guys have seen this many many times but I never weave in the ends so I did finally I wore it for the for the yarn crawl and it was quite warm because although today is 67 Yesterday was like 90. Ugh. Too hot. Well, Saturday, not yesterday. Today's Monday. But there you go. That's an old hole that's now full. <laughs> so we get to the Little Knittery, and Noro is one of the featured yarns. This is Silk Garden Sock Solo. This is a beautiful green tweed. And a beautiful coral. I wanted to get the purple and the um, maroon color. TWA. <laughs> I wanted to get the marine, the maroon, 
and the purple, but I did not. Sorry I keep getting interruptions. Uh, Noro. I got these two Noros. And then I was looking for some buttons and Kat's grandmother, the owner of the Little Knittery, she has these buttons that she got from her grandmother and she had them for sale. They're beautiful little light purple. I love them. This was going to be for the project that I finished on Thursday. And then I saw um, Jilda. What's up, Jay Bonnie? <laughs> she is a friend of mine. And she is the one that was having the Noro trunk show and the dream trunk show. And she gave me this little uh, little tag, a wooden tag, with some a yarn cutter, I believe. It's his dream. I was like, thank you, baby. She gave me a magazine, too. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I'll have to go get it and show you. It is beautiful. I love that it has the knit version, the crochet version. So we leave, uh, Thelma and I, and we went to go eat at Fred 62 in Los Feliz. It's about four stores over from the Little Knittery. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Another interruption. But I went and got the magazine and I'm out of breath. Noro, this is a magazine. It's a Crafty Chic Crochet. And this is issue number 20. Let me just give you a little sample sample. You have the crochet version and you have the knit version. I'm gonna make this. You have the knit version and the crochet version. Ah! Oh. You have the knit and the crochet. Isn't that cool? And it's like that for most of the... Uh, here's a beautiful little cardigan. Issue number 20, if anybody's interested. It has this beautiful lady on there. She's wearing a Ruana. Uh, that wrap. I can't think of it. I think it's Ruana. So that was gifted to me. Thank you very much. So we head on over to go get some lunch. We went to um, Fred 62 and Thelma and I each got a delicious sloppy joe. So good. She got it with french fries. I got it with onion rings and then she got a vanilla milkshake. Oh, the rain's coming. So we leave. We go to the Knitting Tree LA in Inglewood. As we pull up, we see that the yarn over truck is there. And she's never been inside. There was a long line because it's two per person. It's a truck. I told her, I'll wait, you go shop. She did her little shopping and walked around. And then she came back in the line. We waited an hour in line to see the yarn over truck. Um, we get in. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, there was shawl samples, crochet, and a knit and little washcloth sample sizes of how the yarn works up in knit and crochet. There were so many beautiful yarns. The truck was all jazzed up. It was beautiful. They have my tulip hooks there. They have um, destination yarns. And there's this one yarn that I love and I've always looked for. I bought it first year at Stitches, maybe 2017, 2016. Since then, I've been trying to get a hold of them and they're sold out. They discontinued it, as a matter of fact. So on the truck, they had it, and I was like, well, you know, she's coming home with me, baby. This is from Dragonfly Fibers, and the color is Aurora Borealis. The color is Damsel. Y'all. I can't remember what I made with it, but I've used this before. And I swore if I ever found it again, I would get it. It is DK Weight Damsel from Dragonfly Fibers. Look at these colors, though. And I got this one. This is Destination Yarn. The color is Passport Karachi. 
I'm saying it wrong, but this is what it looks like. <coughs> this is what it looks like. It is gorgeous. This is what I want to make that shawl with. Destination yarns. After we left the yarn over truck, we walked around into the knitting tree and Nicole Frost from Frost Yarn. Hi, Nicole. She was there. My friend Mona was there from the Little Knittery. And there was just, there was so much love in there. So much happiness, joy, like everybody's amongst their fellow people, you know, all the fiber people. And we're just looking at everything and excited to be in a yarn convention, so to speak. And I remembered I had a coupon. And I was like, I have a coupon for the knitting tree. I wonder if I can use it. So I asked, you know, I asked the people that worked there and they said, of course. And she's like, but let me double check, let me ask the boss. So she asked the boss, she comes back and Annette's like, of course. I was like, yes. So there was something that I wanted. And um, there was something that I wanted, it was so beautiful. And I used all my little gifts and all that stuff, and I got it. I've never seen anything like this before. Annette, the owner from The Knitting Tree, she made it herself. And this is like a nod to her mom. I think it's her mom that just passed away. She said her mom used to knit and crochet with a little tiny little lace um, weight yarn. Number nine, I think she said, and I was like, Wow, that's that's really thin. I can never. Nope. So she made this, and I do believe it's resin, and it's a beautiful necklace. But it's not just a necklace. It's a granny square inside, and there's a little tiny hook in there. Isn't that gorgeous? I immediately put it on. I was like, I'm in love, I'm in love. She had knitted swatches. She had uh, crochet granny. She had uh, some other stuff, other designs. It's so beautiful. Oh my gosh, I love it. I immediately put it on and I've been wearing it. Except for today, I took it off to show you guys. This came from the little knittery too, but I've had this for a couple years. So that's what I got at my yarn crawl. My first haul, I'm gonna call it the shawl of death. <laughs> it's an easy shawl, it really is. I promise you it is. But the problem is, the count is off. At the end of each row, it says you should have X amount of stitches. And I, I kept coming off wrong and I'm like, I messaged the designer, I'm like, I keep having trouble and she hearts it. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, thank you for the pattern. Like, I bought the pattern, but I was like, I'm, I'm getting stuck. And so she hearts it again. She hearted all my little things. And I was like, oh my gosh, maybe she doesn't run it. You know, her, her, um, her page. I don't know. But the shawl I'm talking about is the Montana shawl. It's a beautiful freaking pattern. Beautiful. That's her sample. She does have, oh, here's how she has it styled. With fringe, without fringe. I didn't want the fringe. The stitches that you need. And then she has here, for some reason, row five is a little tricky. Make sure you check your stitch count. Well, for after row five down, they were all off, all of them. So I frogged it, I started again, I frogged it, I started again. I frogged it like four times. And um, as one of my friends says, I put it on FU Island. <laughs> because I was so frustrated. And like I told you guys earlier, I get frustrated quickly. If I can't figure something out, I'm gonna throw it or put it away somewhere to get it out of my sight because I'm gonna get hostile. So I always kept it in my bag that my friend Kara gave me. This is Be Kind 
I got this for my Valentine's Day Advent. And I always keep it in the car with me. So whenever I stop, you know, or if I'm in traffic or waiting or whatever, I pull it out and I do a row and I put it back. So I sat down last week sometime. And I was like, how many rows is it? It turns out that the shawl is only 45 rows. Right? Yeah, I think it's 45. And I was like, I'm already at 30. I, I can knock this out fast. My hands are good. I'm going to go to Starbucks right quick. Go get me a drink. Come back, put my classic rock on, and bust it out. In case anybody else is having a problem with the pattern, with the stitch count, for this particular shawl, for this one, I can't speak on others because others you do need to have the exact, exact stitch count. But for this one, um, after row five, if it said single crochet, you know, this many times, that's what I did. If it said double crochet, that's what I did. I was always off between two and six stitches. I don't know where these were coming from, but it came out great. I love it. I used the DK weight, and that's what got me through it. And I finished it, gosh, in an hour maybe. I did the rest of those 10 stitches, 10 rows, and it's beautiful. I haven't blocked it. I don't think I am. It's not long enough like this one where I can toss it around and it'll hang. It's not long enough to do that with. So let me show you what I did. Chelsea Yarns in Sugar Plum. Malabrigo in Ojas, which is the green one. And Malabrigo in Piedras, which is the two-tone one. I turned it into a cowl shawl. Look at that! Oh my god! This is why I say it's 99.9% .9 done. I have two stitch markers here because I got those purple buttons from the little knittery so I could stick them on here and close it up. But when I was talking to Kat, she's like, you can totally just do a single crochet around. And I was like, are you serious? I was just so focused on trying to get this done. I didn't even think to single crochet around or have double crochet. So that's what I'm gonna do. I put it on. Look at this beauty. Oh. Look. I freaking love it. I love it so much. So much. It's so freaking hot. I sent the picture to the designer and she wrote back, oh my God, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. She reposted it on her page. I was like, yay, thank you. I sent it to all my friends. If you guys follow me on Instagram, the link is down below. You guys would have seen it already. I got some pictures taken from um, my son's girlfriend. She used the new iPhone that they have. I don't have an iPhone. And it gave it a nice little silhouette and the whole bit. And here are those pictures. <coughs> a nice silhouette, it was beautiful. And then I also put my tag on there that I got from uh, Stitches West. It says handmade. And then there's a little heart on the other side. Because I figured since I struggled so much with the shawl and the stitch count, that word is appropriate. <laughs> so there you go. Isn't that gorgeous, dude? Oh my god. Oh my god. It's starting to rain. I'm so in love. So on our way to the uh, yarn, yarn crawl, I was working on this shawl. Now this shawl, this is the yarn that I purchased at uh, Stitches West from Apple Yarns. If I can remember the colorway, I'll put it down below. And then I have this from Chelsea Yarns. This is a Chelsea Coop collection. And I merged the two. And I made my favorite seat to sea shawl. For the edging at the bottom, I used, uh, you guys know my friend Tamara Kelly, Mowgli. She has the Fortunes Shawlette. I'll leave that link down below. She has a special edging that she does for the bottom once you finish your, your shawl. 
So I was only able to do the single crochet and then the first round of the Fortune's Shawlet border on my C2C shawl. I've not woven in ends because I don't want to do it till after I block it. And here it is. See the border? I hope you could see it. Look how freaking gorgeous this is! Ah! It's a little red tassels here. It sits perfectly, nice and toasty. Ah, C to C shawl is so easy, so easy. I did all this in the car, all this color I did in the car while Selmer drived. Ooh, love it, I like it a lot. That I keep in here in my Alaska Crafty Gal Victoria project bag. I've taken this everywhere with me. It is dirty and it needs a wash. It needs a wash. So that's my second foe. My third foe, Repeat Crafter Me, has made a tutorial for an Easter Bunny basket. And I have plenty of acrylic yarn, but I didn't have chunky. So I got two worsted held together. I used a K hook. And it is so tight, my hands were hurting, I got a flare up, ah, pfft, all that. So I did not get to put the eyes on, because for one, I didn't have eyes. Oh, I did get those at the little knittery. Ah, uh, the knitting tree. So this is my bunny. I used uh, purple scrap yarn acrylic hell double. See? There's the ears. It's all made in one piece. You don't attach nothing on later. You put the eyes here and then the little nose, or you could stitch it on. There's little slots here on each side. Where you stick one ear through. And you fill it with candy, goodies, money, an Easter egg. So there's my little egg. Terry Mott is in myself. Hi, Terry! Her and I did these little bunnies. Because she was saying that um, she hasn't been inspired to do anything. And I was like, let's make these bunnies. So she's like, okay. So she did hers like right away. But I struggled because I was, you know, I was getting frustrated. When I get frustrated, I get hostile. So that's my third foe. As for hoes, I'm not. I can't think of any hoes that I'm working on. Oh, well, the cozy the cozy just feel cozy shawl I'm still working on that that's gonna be a long process um, and the juniper cowl from TL yarn crafts those are my two active hopes and that is all so I hope you're still with me and you enjoyed today's adventures and I'd also like to say a little um, special congratulations to my very very good friend Ben Proudfoot Ben is the director, producer, cameraman extraordinaire. He has over 50 short documentaries, 50 movies, and uh, he just won an Oscar last night. Mm -hmm. This is my friend. Oh, so happy for him. Ben Proudfoot. I'll leave his link down below for the movie. It is the, uh, the queen of basketball, Lucy Harris. It's a great little 20 minute video about Lucy Harris the uh, first female black basketball player. She was inducted into the Hall of Fame. And Ben made a movie about her and they went to Tribeca, Trifecta, Tribeca. And they went to Tribeca and she went and her whole family went to Mississippi. And then um, she passed away in January, the end of January. And then she was nominated for the Oscar and she won Ben's movie one. I got to see him Saturday. I gave him the biggest hugs and the biggest kisses. And I got to meet Lucy's family because they were in the car and Thelma was with me. And I'm trying to tell her like, this is bad. This is bad. But you know, if you don't have that, um, 
you know, if you don't know the people like I know the people, you're going to be like, oh, nice to meet you, you know, it's nice to see you. Today, she's like, oh, my God, I met Ben. I'm like, I told you. Like, come on. So I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Congratulations to my Ben. I love you so much. If you ever see this, you so deserve this. You worked your ass off making movies, and I'm so, so proud of you. I love you so much. And that's all I have. Check the links down below. Please don't forget to watch The Queen of Basketball, Lucy Harris. Click right underneath. I'll also leave it at the end of this video. And that is all, my friends. Hong Kong. <laughs> okay, guys. I'll see you later. And I hope you have a beautiful day. Don't forget to check out Thelma's edition of her experience at the LA Air and Crawl. Be kind to each other. Stop fibbing. Don't fib. It's no bueno. Bye-bye.